depan saya dia ada ibu yang cakap dengan anak dia dekat shopping mall. Kalau you lari lagi, saya akan suruh lelaki hitam tu tangkap you. It happened in front of you? It happened in front of me, tapi uh, my wife knows uh, Mandarin. So, dia yang translate untuk saya. Satu, saya pernah mengalami diskriminasi kaum. You didn't drink, like you never tak pernah ya atau ada ada kerajaan. I was like, I thought everyone. Saya ingat semua akan minum. Oh, tak ada. Eh? I can't even pinpoint myself. Saya hanya sekali, first time I kena slap oleh kawan lah, kawan Melayu. So we are like having conversation in the car. Then I was like, kenapa tak makan api? It's like the tone that uh, basically created some tension. So I got slapped. Bah! Then after that, we really sit down and then talk. Baru kita faham, oh kenapa tak makan. That is the time that it trigger. Macam niat saya nak faham lagi banyak lagi. Experience saya banyaknya di sekolah. Walaupun saya ada markah tinggi daripada budak-budak uh, pelajar yang dekat kelas pertama, saya tak dibenarkan pergi ke kelas pertama. Se uh, cikgu saya cakap, senang saja. You bukan Melayu, so tak boleh masuk kelas pertama. Pengetua pun cakap sama. Ini di sekolah rendah. Abang pula? Saya. So, uh, ada makan-makan dalam uh, kelas time tu. And um, time tu, orang tak tahu yang Uh, Hindu tak boleh makan daging. Mm -hmm. Dan ni my teacher lah. Uh, ni ada uh, daging tak? She said no. Because she didn't know. Okay. Then uh, once I eat, I already know the texture is different. So I cakap dekat my cikgu lah. Cikgu macam ni, uh, ni daging saya tak boleh makan. Then she said to me, uh, takkan sebab you seorang saya nak kena tukar satu menu. Mm -hmm. So I was like stunned lah sebab mm -hmm. I was like 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Dah jumpa. Racism sistemik tidak wujud di Malaysia. Here comes the hot one. Saya rasa wujud. Saya rasa wujud. Okay, tak perlu minum tu. Sila, sila, sila. Saya rasa wujud. Sejak muda kita ada wujud. Oh, saya rasa racism sistemik tidak wujud. Uh, sebab yang saya faham daripada sistem ini ialah satu penggubalan sesuatu dasar atau polisi daripada kerajaan. So saya rasa uh, peluang tu masih ada dan sama juga dengan peluang untuk pendidikan ataupun beasiswa uh, kita tak menafikan mana-mana hak kaum-kaum uh, lain untuk sambung belajar, dapatkan beasiswa dan juga belajar kat luar negara. Saya daripada kecil sekolah kebangsaan, kemudian sekolah menengah, sekolah agama dan sekarang pun masuk universiti universiti Islam. Sebenarnya Uh, kita sudah ada peruntukan yang jelas berdasarkan uh, Perlembagaan Persekutuan yang merupakan undang-undang tertinggi di negara kita uh, tentang uh, yang juga telah pun uh, meliputi tentang isu diskriminasi. Jadi saya rasa dari segi undang-undang kita sudah ada peruntukan yang jelas uh, cuma dari segi pelaksanaan yang perlu untuk kita tambah baik. When I SPM, I go SPM, my result is the same as my Indian friend. Exactly the same. Tapi dia punya English lagi better than mine. I got to travel and do my study abroad but he can only do study locally at that time I know it's like uh, how come uh, I am a kenapa saya uh, I can get to where I am tapi my friend tak dapat saya rasa saya rasa itulah systemic racism yeah. maknanya racism tu dah memang indulge into the system sebelum ni dia memang macam property ke uh, to lift up the community yes, yes. to bumi putera community tapi sekarang saya rasa dia dah terjebak ke isu-isu lain pula yeah. Semua semua yang kita bercakap, uh, berdiskusi, mesti ada special rights for Bumi Putera. Uh, you can't touch certain topics. Macam, there is already an understanding. Uh, bila anak saya membesar nanti pun, dia akan tahu yang isu Bumi Putera, isu Melayu tidak boleh 
di, dipetikaikan ataupun disoalkan. Even for knowledge purpose, you can't ask why are they getting the privileges. Uh, so, I, I rasa sistem tu dah korup. Uh, the, the, the racism, dia dah masuk dalam uh, sistem tu dan tersebar ke tempat-tempat yang tak sepatutnya. Saya setuju dengan poin Abang Prime yang tentang sampai ke tahap tak boleh dipersoalkan langsung. Uh, yang itu saya rasa saya tak setuju. Sebab uh, kalau seolah-olah tak, di, tak boleh dipersoalkan langsung, dia jadi macam satu, eh, takkan orang nak tanya pun tak boleh. Uh, so, sepatutnya, sepatutnya, uh, Tanya tu boleh dan kita jawablah elok-elok. Oh, kota ni perlu dikekalkan. Hak-hak istimewa ni patut dikekalkan. Ah sebab sekian sekian sekian. Ah sebab kalau terlalu defensif sangat, oh ini tak letakkan. Ah dia akan jadi uh, syak wasangka, kita jadi curiga terhadap kaum lain. Ah so saya rasa uh, tak bolehlah sampai tahap tak boleh dipetikaikan. Cuma uh, racism sistemik itu tak wujud. Sebab saya rasa peluang-peluang itu masih lagi terbuka dan juga boleh diakses oleh kaum-kaum yang lain juga. Macam ni, um, for apa ni kawan-kawan yang bukan Melayu, do you guys understand why we have that? Do you understand the fear of the Malays sampai um, hari tu ICERT nak masuk? Pump, semua orang demonstrasi, especially Malay semua. And then we can't even question. Kita ada masalah dengan sejarah kita eh, sebenarnya. Okay, so saya so, sebagai seorang Melayu, saya pun, want, saya, saya pun tertanya juga, kenapa orang Melayu, so uh, kenapa mereka takut sangat eh? Dan um, and, and I tried to um, faham, tapi memang tak faham lah bila kita belajar sejarah kat sekolah. Memang Ah, apa pun yeah. tak faham yeah, yeah, <laughs> tak ingat tak faham <laughs> tapi uh, since I um, I'm pursuing my studies so saya kena baca balik sejarah from other books and I found out that okay um, patutlah Melayu takut sangat sebab zaman tu macam um, Kiran cakap memang the Melayu tu memang miskin lah tapi bukan all Malays tau elites tak miskin pula yes. ha. and then I baca lagi this other book Um, dia cerita pasal new village for Chinese people. Ya Allah, pasal bila aku baca tu, saya macam, eh, kesiannya dia orang ni kan. So, what, so kenapa history ni tidak diajar masa kat sekolah? I, I never knew. Aku umur 35 baru aku tahu pasal new village lah kejadah semua tu. So, then bila kita, um, and then kaum India pula. Kesian, sedih sangat the history. So, I feel like we were all effed up by the leaders, like colonialists. And then, bila kolonialis dah belah, we are still effed up by the government lah. Uh, saya mungkin pernah mendiskriminasi orang lain berdasarkan kaum mereka. Why I drink is because uh, uh, ayah saya askar. Hmm. Dan kita berpindah, uh, almost half of Malaysia already pindah, like uh, Kelantan. Uh, Johor, Selangor and stuff like that. So, um, when uh, we were in a Malay community, my discrimination towards the Malay people was, oh, I don't want to fight. <laughs> I don't want to cause a stir. I don't want to cause any issues. Just because I'm different, I just want to go with the flow. So, my discrimination towards uh, Malay people was, uh, that's just not cause any issues. Lah. If it's like that, it's just like it being. So, until a certain age, bila I datang KL, then I, I, I faham bahawa yang benda ni is memang tak normal. You have to, they are not um, dangerous people or they are not very sensitive people. You can talk to them. So, that is my form of... So, your discrimination is you avoided Avoid. them. Avoid. Yeah, but that, at that time, benda tu macam, I was doing a good thing. Mm. You know, I was doing a good boy. You know what? It's not a good thing lah because uh, when you growing up, memang you kena faham. Hmm. Culture, kenapa, kenapa, uh, kena, kena hmm. I got one question. Dulu pernah tak? Uh, so when I was young, right? So no offense, ah, no offense. Yeah. And say that uh, kalau kau jahat, nanti saya panggil orang India pak uh, tangkap. Betul ada. Oh, yeah. Have you have you ada. come across that? And then, depan uh, saya, depan saya dia ada ibu yang cakap dengan anak dia dekat shopping mall. Kalau you lari lagi, saya akan suruh lelaki hitam tu tangkap you. So, it happened in front of you? It happened in front of me, tapi uh, my wife knows uh, Mandarin. So, dia yang translate untuk saya. I have to say, dia, dia macam kebiasaan dalam, mungkin dalam kampung yang kecil. So, uh, this is how we've been taught. And then, we were get used to it. Kita macam biasa dah. Macam, okay, now the Chinese will be one kelompok. 
and then the Malay will be one of the Kerajaan patut menunjukkan usaha yang lebih untuk membantras diskriminasi kaum. Do your damn job. <laughs> Top down approach tu penting. It's exactly. Uh, that's why I said do your damn jobs. Yeah. Tapi we also have bottom up. Contohnya macam kita. Contohnya ada macam-macam usaha lain selain uh, state sponsored approach ataupun usaha kerajaan kan nak menyatukan kita whatever semua tu uh, which seems very superficial to, in my opinion and I'm, I'm saying this because I um, I memang pelajar kajian etnik okay? and uh, from my reading semua tu actually kerajaan dah banyak buat tapi dia macam superficial, superficial serius contoh eh contoh dekat sekolah rendah korang ada tak experience uh, program um, macam uh, interaction kita panggil remark Korang experience. So, benda tu wujud. Tapi peruntukan tak diberikan. Kesungguhan tak ada. Political will tu kurang. Saya telah mengajar di pelbagai jenis universiti. Saya pernah mengajar di UITM, uh, di uh, universiti swasta. Dan saya lihat ini. Kalau pelajar Melayu, seseorang pelajar Melayu itu, ataupun kebanyakan pelajar Melayu, mereka akan bertanya saya balik. Uh, Miss, kita ada ke masalah racism? Uh, because they don't see or maybe they don't experience it but then bila saya dengar luahan hati uh, pelajar-pelajar bukan Melayu pelajar India pelajar Cina Sabah Sarawak pun banyak sangat dia orang lalui uh, diskriminasi tersebut jadi i think bukan i think lah, memang kita ada masalah uh, racism di Malaysia uh, cuma kadang-kadang orang akan cakap uh, tak adalah benda ni di, isu ni diperbesarkan Uh, tapi saya, bagi saya, kalau ada seorang salah seorang pun tak kira etnik apa melalui pengalaman itu, itu to me that is serious already lah. Mm, dan kita harus menangani perkara tersebut. Setiap negara harus mempunyai undang-undang anti-diskriminasi. I have a grey area on this one. Even though I I'm the one that advocate, kita kena ada. If you wanted uh, fast solutions, you need something that it is like a faster track to, to do that. So then I was like, after the conversation, I feel like, yeah, the most important thing at Padidikan. Because if you don't, don't teach them, yeah. they, will not, uh, they will not get evolved, they will not get developed, and then they won't be improved. So kalau kita paksa saya, tak percaya pasal paksaan. If you enforce without giving them a good reason, yeah. Dia macam elastic kind of a, 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 a response like that. But I think it has to come together. Undang-undang is also a part of education. It also educate people. I mean, I'm, I think education has to come with laws. This is my point of opinion. Uh, but I think and discrimination, I mean, especially racial discrimination, is like moral values. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You cannot enforce it on people. Yes. It has to be nurtured. Yeah. So again, it's back to education. Yeah. The main platform. Konvensyen dan piawaian antarabangsa seperti ICERT mampu menangani isu perkauman. Saya tak minum. ICERT tidak mampu menangani isu perkauman. It's actually good kan sebenarnya ICERT tu. Uh, dalam undang-undang, kan ada dua. Satu undang-undang antarabangsa, satu undang-undang domestik. Jadi sebelum ICERT is uh, undang-undang antarabangsa lah. Jadi saya rasa sebelum kita tengok undang-undang antarabangsa, kita kena tengok dulu undang-undang domestik. Dan undang-undang domestik sebenarnya dah uh, cover dah benda-benda yang ICERT uh, propose. Contohnya macam dis- anti-diskriminasi, uh, perkara lapan dalam pelebagaan persekutuan. Memang ada cakap tentang tak boleh ada sebarang diskriminasi. Jadi uh, saya rasa sebab tu uh, undang-undang, se- uh, undang-undang semasa uh, yang negara kita ni pun dah cukup memadai untuk uh, counter isu-isu macam tu. The reason why I said was opposed by especially by the academicians and those are ni mungkin boleh komen sikit lah as a lawyer student as because there are some sort of uh, disagreement ataupun tak sama dengan perlembagaan Malaysia. Komentar dia bukan isu anti discrimination masa whether they are agree or disagree with the discrimination dia lebih kepada the effect on some of the articles and perlembagaan. Uh, saya ada terbaca tentang Yaman kan, bila Yaman uh, rectify ICERT hmm. dan Yaman ni ialah negara majoriti Muslim dan ada orang yang menjadikan uh, ICERT sebagai alasan untuk menghalalkan gay marriage hmm. 
dekat negara yang Muslim majority dan dia orang menggunakan alasan kenapa nak halang uh, gay marriage dan itu adalah satu, um, dan menghalang gay marriage adalah salah satu tindakan diskriminasi. Jadi saya rasa itu antara ke uh, kekhawatiran concern daripada uh, rakyat kita yang tak setuju dengan ISIS memandangkan tentang uh, ya yeah, Islam is official religion for the federation jadi dan dia bertentangan dengan budaya dan juga moral uh, ketimuran jadi saya rasa uh, kita tak nak ada orang yang uh, ekstrim sebegitu uh, tapi menggunakan ISIS dan juga uh, melabelkan tindakan menghalang tu sebagai satu tindakan diskriminasi tak, tapi ISIS ni yang uniknya dia it's non-binding. Maknanya dia uh, tak semestinya kalau ikut uh, you have to ikut every negara tu. Kalau setengah negara dia macam uh, bila kita cakap pasal trade agreement kan for example. Uh, bila datang ke Malaysia you cannot touch bumi putera rights, uh, intellectual property mesti ada ni 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 ni. Okey kaum ni kaum ni kita tak boleh tentu. Memang dia boleh carve out. Dia panggil carve out lah. ISIS pun boleh buat sebenarnya. Since I'm doing your thing, so hmm. I'll just uh, touch very shortly, very briefly about this. But bila tadi kita cakap pasal undang-undang dan upbringing and uh, it's it's come from the in, from within, right? I believe um, certain things yang um, besar macam ni. When you have black and white, what you can and what you cannot do, then people will start following that path. Such things like hate speech. You know, like every time there's Deepawali, Chinese New Year. Even Hari Raya, everybody plays Merchun, then you will see people throwing hate speech. Oh, why Malays playing, you know, at this time at night, uh, Raya, why Indians throwing away the fireworks and all these things. So, when you have ISIS coming in and telling you hate speech is illegal, people will start to, okay, better I take a step back. And then when they do that, the next generation who come in, they already know, okay, this is already banned in Malaysia, we can't talk hate speech. That May I know which other country uh, ratify ISIS that you know of? Uh, 182 countries under UN and uh, only 12 countries did not sign ISIS. The two the two Muslim countries which did not ratify ISIS is Malaysia yes, and Brunei. 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 But when you say that ISIS probably can resolve yeah. this issue, mm. but if you go other countries, the yang ratify still is still there. For me, for yeah. yeah. saya, I think it's the right step forward. If you do not do this, and let's talk about uh, Malaysia's image globally. You have 182 Hmm. countries on the United Nations, but only 12 have no signed. And we pride ourselves with being one of the negara oh, maju, right? Hmm. Um, in the global standpoint, we're going to look quite silly because you pride yourself as uh, negara maju, but you don't sign um, this ISA thing. All this while I was thinking from my perspective, I did not know that uh, ISA, uh, the Malays have, uh, have particular concerns uh, that ISA cannot be Uh, carved out or what is I said first of all so I think uh, we are going back to the education of I said uh, where I now I think that I said was not properly explained uh, properly uh, deliberated uh, openly in uh, to the public uh, which caused the unhappiness and uneasiness saya lebih memahami isu diskriminasi kaum selepas perbincangan hari ini I always have these questions, Article 153. Because among the uh, masyarakat, kan, the 153 is always one of the topic. Yeah. Uh, so, I nak to pandangan. Is Article 153 still relevant? I think uh, it's still relevant. Okay, 153. Dan betul, memang dia dibuat masa zaman awal kemerdekaan dulu sebab jurang tu terlalu luas. Tapi jurang tu masih lagi luas sekarang pun. So kalau abang kata tak relevan, uh, saya kata masih relevan sebab tahun 2021 pun memang jurang bumi putera dengan bukan bumi putera tu dari segi ekonomi memang masih ada dan masih jauh. Sebab tu saya rasa memang kita perlu untuk kekalkan. Gemakan semula, kaji semula tentang maybe nak tambahkan kota dan sebagainya tu, saya rasa perlu untuk lebih terkini. Ah yang tu saya setuju. Selepas perbincangan ni saya rasa Uh, kita kena kaji betul-betul kalau betul ISIS itu uh, tidak mengganggu hak-hak istimewa kaum bumi putera yang termaktub dalam Perlembagaan Persekutuan dan kita boleh untuk yakinkan orang yang tidak akan ada percanggahan uh, saya rasa kita boleh bersetuju. Apakah perasaan anda tentang sesi? 
It's awesome. Oh. Yeah, wonderful. Jump <laughs> was good experience. I mean, we really have to talk. We can talk about race, man, openly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. It feels uh, so rad. refreshing to have such a session. <laughs> yeah.